ready? Yes. Hello and welcome to yet another adventure during the apocalypse. I'm Selena Rosen and I will guide you to through today's lesson in dog ownership among, among other things. But first I wanted to say people have been telling me if I need want my numbers to go up I have to get kids to watch my channel. So I've only raised the one kid, but I've helped raise dozens of children. So I'm gonna use what I know about kids to try to get me some younger subscribers. God, I hope no kids are watching this. This is so filthy and horrible and violent that no child should ever, ever watch this channel. If you're watching this, kids, please stop now before you see something you can't unsee. Oh, my God. <coughs> <coughs> Choking on spit, not the COVID. All right. So, now I'm going to talk to you about dogs. Now, as we know, all animals are actually assholes. Some are bigger assholes than others. Now, when you have a dog on your homestead, you always want to make sure that that animal matches you and your homestead. Item number one, Maya. Maya, look over here. Turn around, Gr Granny, and get a picture of Maya. This is Maya. <coughs> Maya Hi, Maya. Is perfect for Hi, Maya. our homestead. Hi, Maya. Maya is small. She doesn't eat a lot. She is a mutt. She's half Shih Tzu and half Queensland Blue Healer. She is fantastic with the animals. She is easy. Once a year, I give her a half-ass DIY haircut, as you can see. She's good for the rest of the year. When I want to bathe her, it's very simple. Watch this. Come here, Maya. We take Maya. Maya, you want to go swimming? Can we throw her in the pool? <laughs> Maya comes up, she gets out of the pool. Now get out of the yard. See, Maya minds. She does what she's told. She's easy to take care of. She's extremely, extremely, extremely low maintenance. Okay. Good fit for our homestead. But. Then we have Goldie, who I don't see right now. She's in the doghouse. Is she in the doghouse? Yes. Now Goldie is the opposite. Watch that big pile of Goldie shit right there. Okay, Goldie is the opposite of a good match for our farm. Goldie is huge. Goldie tears shit up. Goldie does not mind. She's extremely hard to groom. But she's a very sweet dog, and you don't get to throw your adoptees out just because they're not a good fit. But Goldie does make hideous, hideous messes. And Goldie shits ginormous piles of dog crap. So why do I want to call this episode Much Ado About Doggy Doo Doo? I'll tell you why. Because this is what Goldie does. See this half a pile of, half a bucket, a five gallon bucket of dog shit? She does that in about a week. And she likes to shit right where we have to walk. So we have to clean it up. Now, forever I did not have these neat ass pooper scoopers. So I had to pick up dog shit with two of those scoops like I made out of the uh, gallon jugs. But now I have these. I got them at a uh, road damage place for five bucks, worth every penny. Okay, but as you can see, she makes a lot of shit. Now, what you might not know, hopefully you do if you're a gardener, you can't use dog shit in your garden unless you compost it until it's nothing. It has to be composted for a very long time. Why is that? Because a dog's digestive tract and ours is too similar. You can literally get bacteria and stuff from dog shit. Cat shit's even worse. I'll tell you one at another time what I do with cat shit. But right now I'm going to show you what I do with dog shit. Now, like I said, 
Goldie doesn't really mind. Goldie makes huge messes. Now, as you can see, this is a very nice bench in our backyard where Goldie has excavated to the point where one of the legs no longer touches the ground. Come from this angle. Oh my goodness. Okay. This is one of Goldie's messes. That huge hole over there on the side of the pool pump, that's one of Goldie's. This ginormous pool hole here, also one of Goldie's. And this ginormous hole here, where she has actually covered up one of our stepping stones. She did that yesterday. Now, with Goldie, oh, in this shirt, that shirt is Maya's bed, but Goldie brought it out here and tore it up. So now it needs to go in the trash. So that we'll do that later. But yeah, so that's the kind of fun stuff Goldie does. All right, so what am I doing today? I'm gonna show you how to at least temporarily stop your dog from digging up the shit that you don't like. And it's very easy. Now I have to pick my battles. Some of these holes I need to leave or she's just gonna go someplace else and dig more. So I'm probably gonna leave the ones on either side of the pool thing. Okay, but this one, obviously we don't need this giant hole that keeps our bench from sitting. So, take about half this dog shit and we stick it right in that hole. We take the other half and we put in her a new hole where as you can tell, she's dug up my electric line to my pump. Okay, so why am I doing that? Dogs don't like to be around their own shit. So until this completely rots out, Goldie will not dig another hole here. Uh -huh. You put the dog shit there, and they then... don't like the dog shit, so they don't dig there. Now, as soon as the dog shit rots, they'll go right back to it. But you get like a six month to two month reprieve on the ginormous holes, which hopefully by then, she will have either decided those holes are fine or we'll have cooler weather. So this dirt, I'll show you where I get all my dirt later because it's kind of cool all by itself. I'm just gonna put some regular dirt right over the top of that. I'm gonna take my hoe, spread it out, knock the clods out. And like I said, that'll stop her from digging there for a while and give us our seat back. <laughs> Stinking dog. She is a very sweet dog though, thank God, because otherwise she ain't, ain't worth killing. She's the damnedest things. Well, now that she's old enough, she doesn't try to knock us down every time we um, come in the yard, sometimes too. Sometimes she does. Yeah. That's her okay, so how did we wind up with Goldie? We wound up with Goldie because somebody dumped her at Mother's house, and she had knocked Mother down once, and I was afraid she was going to break every bone in Mother's body. Yeah, she heard you by leaning against you. Yeah, because yeah. she's a... Uh, Short-haired Pyrenees is what the uh, is what you looked up, right? Yeah, right. So she is good with the animals. She doesn't eat the chickens. Okay, so I'm gonna scrape here where she wants a hole. I'm gonna get get that dirt so that I don't have to deal. Get that rock too and put it in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean off my poor stepping stone. The idea is to come out here without getting muddy because this part of the yard, when it rains, can get really wet. So, I'm going to scrape that off first. I'm just going to fill that up. And we're just going to fill that up right on top of the shit. And like I said, we'll get a reprieve from the digging there for six weeks to two months. So, at which time she will have made some more shit and I can do it again. <laughs> Really? You think yes. she'll make more shit in that Okay, time? so what else? Okay, so I don't always have this to do with the dog shit. And like I said, the dog makes an inordinate amount of dog shit. Uh, so, it's just unbelievable. That dog does nothing but eating shit. What an asshole! <laughs> um, she has that bark. Okay, so 
We were looking for a new home for Goldie when the apocalypse hit. And uh, then we decided we'd better keep her because, by God, the coyotes don't come around here anymore and make noise. And although the dog would never bite because I won't have a biting dog, if you walk into this cage with that dog, she's so excited, she will jump on you, knock you down, and hold you there. Yeah. If she doesn't know you. <laughs> so, in the apocalypse, I'm figuring that anybody who's trying to break in or do anything kind of mischief, a 150 pound dog standing on them, probably gonna run them off. <laughs> If the bark doesn't keep them away. Yeah, if the bark doesn't keep it away. I mean, they're probably not going to wait to realize, well, she's really not going to eat me. No. Oh. Because she is, she is huge, and she will step on somebody and hold them there. Well, she did it to a friend of ours. Yep. And she was playing with him. Yeah. So I can't imagine what the dog might do. I, I wouldn't have a biting dog, but I can't imagine that she would probably get pretty wily if she thought somebody was really up to no good. But she's pretty good. Okay, and there you go. And now we have fixed our problem and it'll stay fixed. Now, like I said, that's not all the shit that dog will make, right? She's going to make that every week, so what do I do with it? Okay, they are dogs. They are considered a predator by most other animals. So, I take the dog, the dog shit and I will put it in go-betweens, which I will teach you about later. But they're basically, quickly, they're two, I have on at least three lines on my property, I have double fences and I have stuff planted in the middle. And I will put the shit in the go-betweens because for pasture it doesn't matter. The goats eat that when it comes up through the fences. But, so it doesn't matter that it's dog shit because they're ruminants and these aren't. Um, so I will put it in there and it deters a certain amount of raccoons and possums and stuff like that from coming into the property. But that's about it. That's doggy do. Until next time, don't step in it.